So for this video today, I thought I would go through my busking setup and what equipment I use when I busk. And at the end of that, I'll also talk a bit about things that's good to know about busking if you want to try it for yourself for the first time. Or if there's any equipment that you think you probably should be buying or things you should be considering when it comes to locations or, or what busking can do for you as an artist. So yeah, let's jump straight into the video. So the first thing that I always use when I busk is my Martin X series guitar. I had this guitar for a couple of years. I absolutely love it. This is the first guitar that I actually went to a shop and picked out after testing out loads of different guitars. It was very exciting. So this is just what I use. I know other people may not busk a guitar, some people may not even know how to play a guitar, but that's fine. Because the beautiful thing about busking is you can literally do any sort of performance. I know this video is tailored more towards musicians, but you get the idea. So yeah, item number one is guitar. And just a side note, always remember to bring a strap with you because you don't want to be trying to like hold it up while playing. Item number two is my microphone, and everyone knows what a microphone does. This particular mic I have is a Shure PG50. This is a great mic, it doesn't even cost a lot. I picked this up for 30 quid, brand new. Honestly, Hand on Heart, Shure is such a good brand and a good, reliable brand of microphone. If you accidentally drop it on the floor, even on concrete, it will still work. Dynamic microphones, typically, by characteristic, they are very well-built microphones. But yeah, something like this, a Shure PG50. 58 dynamic microphone and if you have a bit more money you maybe you can upgrade yourself to an SM58 which is the gold standard of dynamic vocal microphones. And just a side one as well this is a little um, foam cover that I bought for three pound off eBay it doesn't come with a microphone. I think it's quite nice because when you have a cold day you can sort of put your nose up to it and you can keep your nose warm. But yeah the microphone. Oh I guess I need right. <laughs> Item number three this is very important this is my Roland Street Cube. Now this bad boy is something you probably see a lot of people busk with. It's so common. It is, by all accounts, an industry standard busking amp. The sound on this thing travels very well, so people down the road will be able to hear you and know that you are busking. Other than that as well, it's just so well equipped. You've got two different input channels, one with an XLR and one just with a jack, but this one's tailored more towards an instrument and this one is tailored more towards vocals or instrument as well because you may not be just singing you may be playing different instruments they both come with basic equalization and you've got your reverb and delay switches here and you can put all sorts of effects you can i think you can even put a flange yeah you can put a freaking flange you can put a phase on here like all sorts it's so cool and something else which is very good which i would suggest why is it still good even if you don't play any instruments is you have yourself a stereo aux in so if you're singing to backing tracks you can plug your phone straight into here and play out and they're very sturdy as well and light and battery operated as well. It takes six AA batteries. One of my bits of advice is always bring spare batteries, especially if you're doing a long busking set. So item number three is my Roland Street Cube. Item number four, and I think this is so important, is the advertisement board. This is really what's gonna get you some new followers and fans and really reach out to a new audience while busking because at the end of the day, that's sort of what busking's for as well as earning some decent money you also want to advertise your socials and you want to get people and introduce them to what you want them to see. So I took the time to get this printed off onto plastic so it's waterproof. Obviously you don't really want to busk in the rain but even just like damp, it means this is going to last a lot longer. And yeah, I've done a bit of a rough job sellotaping it but the reason I've done it is I've sellotaped it to some cardboard so it's a little bit more sturdy. It also folds up so it can go into a guitar bag so it's easier to transport around. And just because it's a little bit heavier, it won't blow out in the wind as much. I purposely put a bend in it as well so it rests nicely in my guitar case. And people, you can read that from the other side of the road. And what I've just put on it is my logo and just what I want people to go to. So I've got my Instagram and my Spotify. So I'm hoping that any new people come back who may be interested in what I am performing for them, I would always hope that they would check out my Instagram and or my Spotify. Something like this is so effective because you can literally pick up 10 to 20 new followers busking a day and that's without any ads, any organic Instagram algorithmic stuff. This is more organic as it comes, like you're actually inviting people to follow you on the street, like a person to person experience. And I think sometimes that's the best way to get new fans. So yeah, that is item number four. Now the last thing I want to talk about, which I think is so important, and it's two things, but I'm gonna count them as one, and that is your phone and a phone clip stand thing. So obviously this, you clip your phone to it, and what I do is I connect this to the mic stand. I've got a notes section on my phone, which is just for busking, which I write all the songs and some lyrics down if there's songs which I've just learned and maybe I want to just have the lyrics there while I'm performing the songs for the first time. And you can also, if you want to live stream as well, 
you've got a stand so you can actually live stream yourself busking as well so you can give something to your followers on social so it's very good to have one of these and i'm sure everyone has one of these so yeah that is what i busk with so i'm just going to quickly talk about a few things that i wish i was told when i first started busking because i feel like it helped me not only to make more money as an independent artist but it also just makes you feel a bit more comfortable going out there because it can be a bit intimidating going out on the streets performing for the first time but i assure you busking is probably one of the best things that you can do especially get into it young so the first thing i wish i was told is that you don't actually technically need a license to busk. So after doing some research into it, one of the things I can tell you is that you don't actually need a license to busk in most places. Now, if it is a public place you're busking in, you don't technically need a license to busk. Before you go out busking, just research into the area and do have a look to see if there's any sort of limitations. Maybe you need a license to busk there and there are some places which you will require a license. Like for example, I know in London, in Uxbridge Town and Camden, you need a license to busk and also in tube stations as well. And also private properties in London as well, you need permission from the people who own the land. Uh, for example, just the area outside the London Eye, I know that you need permission to bust there because that is actually private property. But my advice is if you, you find a spot and it's public property and you don't see any reason to need a license to go there, you can go there and you can busk and I guarantee you will not have any problems all day. But sometimes you get the scenario where you've had a noise complaint or one of the stores has done a noise complaint um, and you may get some security guards moving you on. My advice is just move on. If they ask you to move, move, be respectful about it and then they'll be respectful back to you. Again, that rarely happens. You know, I've bust down Oxford Street so many times and I've never been moved on once. One of the things I wish I was probably informed a bit more on is the amount you earn. Now, this varies drastically. I'm not going to put a silver lining and everything and say that, oh, you're going to earn so much money. There are going to be days when you earn literally nothing. When you busk, you sort of got to plan the days and what the occasions is and anticipate when the best days to busk are. If you busk every day, of course you're going to earn money every day, but if you busk on a Tuesday maybe it won't be as good as if you busk at the weekend when more people are around. Obviously with Covid at the moment that's sort of out the window and you can't busk at all. But Covid isn't going to be around forever, lockdown isn't going to be around forever. But if I had any advice I would always recommend taking the time, scope out the best area where the most people are. It's very obvious and it's common sense really but that's where the money is and don't be disheartened if you have a day where you don't earn a lot of money and you're a bit underwhelmed because there will be days when you get a lot just the other week i was having a bit of a quiet week and i wasn't earning a lot of money and then it just takes one person to come up and give you something like a tenner and all of a sudden you're having a good day you just gotta power through it and you can see yourself earning some good money as an independent artist one more bit of advice i'd give especially you as a musician if you've got originals i would busk of them I've been told in the past, why busk with originals? People aren't going to be interested in that. People only want to hear music they know. And I don't get that because I get people come up to me, say, oh, wow, that song was amazing. They say, oh, who was it by? And then it's just amazing seeing the look on their face when I say that the song was by me. And that's a way to get a new fan because then you can tell them to look it up on Spotify and you can engage in conversation with people. And honestly, if your music's good enough, it's going to get heard by people and people are going to love it. That said, it is good to have covers and not only covers, don't just do what's in the charts today. Really mix it up because you think about the, the demographics of people that you're appealing to when you're out there busking. That's age anything from, well, 0 to 100. Still, so you've got to have music from lots of different decades. And I normally find that is when I get paid the most money. That's a little secret that I will fill you in on. But honestly, if you are an artist, I cannot emphasise enough how crucial and how rewarding it is to busk. It's free advertising and it is an income from doing what you love. One more thing which I think is so important is you're performing to people you don't know and maybe if you know you want to be an artist but you still not got that confidence to perform on stage, this can be the first taste of performing to strangers in a public place. This will really get you prepared for live shows. So this is the video. I feel like I covered quite a lot of the aspects of busking, but if you've got any more questions, just comment below. I'm going to be answering all questions. And also subscribe to my channel as well, because there's going to be a lot more videos like this. And if you found this video helpful, I'm hoping that I can give you a lot more videos that can help you with your, your music, uh, your music career. But again, thank you for sticking around to the end, and I'll see you in the next video. I miss my friends.